Hi, I'm Stephanie Wainwright. I'm a wife, a mom, a business owner, and my life is chaotic all the time. So I created this podcast to help you find the funny, the good, while navigating through the chaos. This is Chaotic Compass Podcast. All right. So, whew. hey guys, what's up? I um this is Stephanie, Chaotic Compass Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I uh gonna jump in this evening with the episode about signs there's issues in your relationship. Um this is kind of one of those sensitive subjects for me. And this is just my experience and I'm sharing what I've been through. This doesn't mean that your your husband or your boyfriend or your significant other is a total douchebag. It's just signs that I wish somebody would have pointed out for me. Not saying that I probably would have listened, but it's just me sharing a little tidbit of information, okay? Full disclosure. All right, so my second husband cheated on me. He did. He was 12 years older than me. And he cheated on me with somebody that was half his age. Does cheating make it any easier regardless? But when somebody is a lot younger, when you are already younger than that person, they're younger than you are. It was just, it stresses me. I'm already pulling on my ear. Okay, so it stresses me out just talking about this, but I want to share this, this with you guys. Okay. Maybe we should go. All right. So before, all right, we'll go ahead and go ahead and get into, I am drinking this evening because my husband cheated on me. Not Ryan, my ex-husband. Okay. Ryan has never cheated on me. He's a good dude. Don't, don't, don't go, don't go attack him. My ex-husband cheated on me, and that's why I drink this evening. So this evening, I'm drinking another artifact. Um, it's called No New Friends. So these guys make these very small batches, and they're very interesting. This is very much on the drier side. It literally has no points for sweetness it has four for acidity and three for structure still not understanding what structure means um no new friends is a bold and effervescent stephanie is not up with the big words i'm gonna need you to dumb it down a little bit It's the blonde. No, I'm just joking. All right. So no new friends is a bold and effervescent party going cider made with cranberries and Macintosh apples. Okay. So it's in the tall boy, love a tall can, but it's only 5.8%. So it's on the lighter side for a bigger, bigger can. For me, it's... It's pretty dry. It's not very sweet. Very tart. Very cranberry. It's not like a vodka and cranberry. But you can definitely. Like vodka and cranberry is sweet to me. But this is like. Like a cranberry wine. But just bitter. So if you're into. If you're into dry wines. This is totally your jam. This is not my jam. I like a little bit of sweetness. And so. Um, but yeah, no, it's definitely different. Um, I appreciate the, the artifact guys, you know, with their cool cans. It's, it's like this paisley maroon and red can. It's definitely different. They're, they're good people over there. And so, um, I picked this up at the early bird cider with my chair creaking everywhere. Um, Early Bird Cider is the newest bottle shop in the 757, specializing in all your craft beer needs. They have an abundant selection of wine, cider, seltzers, and meads, and beer, along with their cooking rubs, 
hot sauces, and so much more. They are not your ordinary beer store. Earlybirdsbottleshop.com. They're on Facebook. Check them out. So here I am drinking again this evening, talking about a hard subject. (sighs) You know, it's good. You know, you know, it's going to be a a hard topic, not necessarily good, but you know, it's going to be a hard topic and bad for Stephanie when she's already like precursoring drinking. Usually I try to save the drinking till the end. Okay, so this evening, my husband cheated on me. My ex-husband cheated on me. And at the time, it was one of the hardest things that I have ever gone through. Right? It was seven years ago, almost to the day, that this happened. And apparently, he had been with this person for months months and I had some red flags but I because I trusted him I and he had every excuse under the world under the sun under the rock whatever or I was under the rock I missed a lot or I didn't miss it. I just didn't let my brain win. I tried to let my heart win. So whatever the reason, I want to share this with you guys. So I am to start off. I never. um, So I have been married three times. I have my my first husband is I had Kylie with my oldest daughter with my second husband. I had my son with, and I'm married with Ryan now. My second husband, <clears throat> my first husband, I didn't trust him in finances. He is a big spender. And, uh, when we were separated, I had a lot of debt and it was combined debt because we had combined bank accounts combined, credit cards. And so I tried to shield myself from that when, so I, once I got a job, I got a new bank account and I um, separated myself from him. To my detriment, this is me speaking. This is, you do you girl, you do you boy. Like, I didn't know what was going on financially in my second husband's and I's relationship because I had my bank account and he had his bank account. He took care of all the utilities. He took care of the lot rent. We lived in a trailer. He took care of all of that. I took care of my phone and sometimes groceries. I took care of, you know, and... I took care of what I had personally and I that was the way that I was able to pay off a lot of my debt because I didn't have to worry about that stuff but to my detriment I wasn't aware so that was my first red flag when we got married we didn't combine bank accounts and I wasn't aware of what his spending habits were not to this day so all right in retrospect all right so my husband and I now Ryan and I we do not we have a joint banking account and he uses that now but I still have been we've been together for six years I still have been very reluctant to transfer all of my stuff one it's a fucking hassle let's just talk about that I gotta move all my car payment, all of the utility payments, all you know, everything over to this. How much work is that going to be, right? Is and it was enough work to change my name on all of the things. So we've been married for two and a half years, and I should be over it by now, but it is what it is. And so we do have a checking account where it is joint. 
I have access to it. I can see what he's spending. I don't care, but it's him trying to earn my trust. And I appreciate that. We've been together for six and a half years, and that's where we're at with our finances. So, so another red flag for me. I know I had a list. I've got to stick to a list because if I go, I'm I could I could ramble on for hours. Another red flag for me was he worked late, often, and at first it was they 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 got a new contract, um, and it was I need to go and repair these things late at night. Like okay, cool. We had, you know. A young son and so that was really hard to be left alone you know at home with, with just that be by myself and so it is in at the time I didn't have a job so it was me by myself at home and so of course your brain kind of goes to a different realm and that's just me of when you're alone you can think and so I called him out on it. Hey, man, you're working really late a lot. And that's kind of weird. And then this was my other red flag. It turned into, what are you trying to say? Why are you accusing me? And I was like, I wasn't accusing you of cheating. I was just bringing up that you're working a lot lately. And it's kind of concerning. And then he turned it around and made me feel guilty because he's just trying to make his business better and he's just trying to do him and it is what it is. I'm like, okay, I apologize. My bad. So stuff that one back down. Another red flag for me, and this was a big one. I had a hard time letting this one go. He came home late. I had already gotten the kids fed and to bed and uh, he smelled like another woman's perfume. And he was like, oh yeah, that secretary, she wears like crazy amount of perfume. She's always constantly spritzing it everywhere. And, you know, it's just, I'm sorry, man, like I'll go wash it right now. Okay, you know, uh, yeah, it, we're, we're good. Yeah, it just, it's just weird that you, you come home late and you're smelling like you never, want, what are you trying to say? I'm not cheating on you. Oh, I wasn't saying, I'm just bringing to your attention that it's weird. Like, okay. Like, and uh, when I constantly was, bringing up like that's weird that's that's odd that's interesting like doesn't really add up i'm gonna drink on this one hold on he accused me multiple times of being crazy you're crazy that that's that's not that's that is not like you are imagining things you you need to get a job and you need to find something else to do. You are just seriously crazy. You have nothing better to do to think up of thing. You watch too many soap operas. That was another thing that was so <laughs> thrown in my face. Yeah, I watched too much Days of Our Lives and apparently I'm conjuring up crazy shit in my head. Okay, got it. Okay, my bad. Um... It came out. So this guy, it was the person that my husband was having an affair with's husband. Right. She was married too. Which makes it even worse. And she knew that he was married. So that is triple down the worst possible situation. You were married. You knew he was married. And it is what it is. And so. I'm not gonna. 
So those were a few of my red flags. These are the crazy fucking antics that happened that came to light. Right? Okay. So apparently the husband of the lack of better word mistress tried to contact me on Facebook because he found out months earlier and tried to contact me. He tried to let me know what was going on. But because I had left my Facebook logged in on the computer and the iPad or the tablet, my husband at the time went in and blocked this person. Yeah. Top notch. So he went in and blocked this person. And because I was a realtor, I was, I was in real estate at the time. And I had a business page. And this person contacted me through my business page on Facebook. But I wasn't able to respond. And I'm like, that's weird. They're like, hey, you need to know some things about your husband. He's not who he says he is. Uh, Contact me and I'll give you some more information. I'm like, that's weird. My husband's in the shower. He's taking an extra long shower. Which was the thing. And he would always take his phone with him, by the way. But we don't talk about that. And... He, um, like he got out of the shower, he came into the bedroom, and I was like, hey man, do you know, and I said this guy's name, and his face went white. And I'm like, what, what's up? What, um, I mean, it, you know, is he a, a client at your business that you might have screwed over? Because, you know, his subject matter was very vague, and I was like, what the hell is going on? And he didn't respond quickly my husband did not respond quickly and uh, i had tried to respond to the person on facebook but it wouldn't let me but this person ultimately kept your husband is cheating on you and here's the proof all the while while i'm asking my husband what's going on and i think my hu- my husband at the time was trying to figure out well how much does she know what is she talking about? And so he was very silent. You know, I, um, his face was ghostly white. He was kind of sweating a little bit, but it was, I, um, I, I'm not a hundred, what, what are you talking about? What's going on? I look back down to my phone and he's telling me my husband's cheating on me. And here's a bunch of photos of text conversations between you and some other person about meeting up, about all the things, about how you're in love with them. And that's when he, my husband, started to cry. In the three years that we have been together, I literally birthed his son. He is 12 years older than me. I've never seen him cry. Theatrics, I feel like, was a thing at the moment, but he cried. Whether it be remorse or whether it be in sadness that he was caught, I don't know. He cried and he cried and he cried and he told me all the reasons why he did it, which... um. One of them was uh, her husband fucked another dude in the Navy. So, and I was like, so another person's husband's gay? And so you, you get to put your dick in her? Like, I'm, I'm trying to understand here, man. Like, help me out. Because, let's be honest, guys. Love my Navy dudes. Like, you guys, like. Nothing against you. Nothing against gay people. I'm just saying, if that's going to be your excuse, 
then my husband's got a lot of women that he needs to fuck. So if that's going to happen, then you've, you've got all the right to cheat on me then, huh? And we're done. He packed a little bag and he went and stayed with his mom. But I'm trying to recount all of the things, you know, like now the time that he recently came home smelling like a woman. It was like, yeah, that makes sense. There was this one time and, you know, go back to last week's episode when my husband left me at a bar. So this is triggering. So my second husband and I, we had gone out. We were married at the time. We had gone out to a bar to hang out with some of uh, our mutual friends and a few of my friends. And uh, he's like, yeah, my, my, my husband was like, yeah, my stomach's not feeling great. You know, like, I'm, I'm going to head out. And, uh, you know, my friends were like, hey, we can give her a ride. It's not a big deal. She's right around the corner. And so luckily I had a ride that time. Um. And so I kept drinking and I kept dancing and I kept, but I wasn't aware that my husband was still hanging out there. He had invited, and that's pretty ballsy, he invited his chick there so he could be at the same place and do the Miss Doubtfire thing. That was me. And I thought it weird that, you know, my husband really doesn't ever complain that he's got stomach issues. Usually he sucks it up because he's got gluten issues and so does my son. And so usually he'll suck it up and he'll just. But okay. He left me at a bar. After the fact of all of this happening, he, my husband accused me of cheating because I got really close with a guy friend that had seen a lot of the signs that I did and he kind of was trying to be there for me. I was trying to be a a friend with this person and that person was desperately trying to be a friend for me. And I was in a moment of, I don't even have to explain it to you, in a moment of freaking weakness after the fact that I found out about my husband. Yes, I was with this guy. But I never cheated on my husband. But my husband knew for a fact in his head that I had cheated on him and he tried to blame me for the demise of our marriage. We were barely married for six months, y'all. Not even. We got married in June and he was already cheating by my birthday in November. So, the end of June, by the way. Not like mid-June, like... So, I had, um, I had come to two terms with, and this is, I don't know if this speaks a lot to me. All right. So I had come to terms with. My husband cheated on me. I was that person. I became that person. I literally, my husband cheated on me and I'm that person now. And I have a path. I can, I can choose to, because I have a kid, choose to be with him and try to make it work and be in distrust for the rest of our relationship and hope that we can amend or I can cut ties to be a better person for our kid and go from there. I chose the first path at first. 
I desperately wanted that family because I was at a low point in my life and I needed him. Literally the next morning, because I don't have enough money in my bank account because I was a real estate agent. The next morning after I found out that he had cheated on me, my phone got cut off because I didn't have enough money to pay for it. My husband. My husband paid for that stuff. So. It was a very, very low point in my life. I need you. Please. I love you. Let's figure out how to work this out. Okay, let's meet at a Starbucks. Figured, okay, it's at a central location and it should be okay. We meet at a Starbucks and uh, he starts doing the whole accusation thing, right? The, uh, well, you did this, this, and this. I'm not here to accuse anybody of anything. I'm trying to figure out how to move forward. And he repeatedly keep kept bashing me over the reasons why he cheated, of why our relationship is horrible, why I'm a horrible person. And I was getting frustrated. I'm like, hey man, let, let's just focus on, I'm here to talk about how do we move forward? And I'm at this point, I'm gritting my teeth like I'm frustrated and he knows that I have a temper, but I was keeping it together the best of my abilities. He's like, look, look, you're losing your shit already. Like you, you, you can't you, you're losing your temper. You can't even sit here and talk to me. You have no ability to have a communi- you know, have a conversation with me. There is no way that you can be the person that I'm looking for because you can't keep it together. I flipped the table over in the middle of the Starbucks and I told him to fuck off and I apologized to the barista on the way out how looking back he was doing everything he could to push me away And I looked at it as I was doing everything wrong to try to save my marriage. It took a lot of therapy to realize that. So. I hope your relationship Your marriage, your relationship with your significant other isn't on the rocks and that you just came in to listen to why Stephanie's struggling. To maybe to make yourself feel better. I don't know. But if you are struggling, I'm so sorry. I get it. Maybe I don't get the specifics, but I'm here. And this is why I do what I do. If these are some red flags, have a conversation. And if your significant other can't have a conversation with you. But above all else, go see a counselor because you've got some shit. Because it's going to be hard. Get that third party opinion. Don't take my opinion. I'm not a licensed therapist. I'm a chick with a freaking mic sitting in my freaking bedroom. Like, don't. But I seriously get it. And I am just hoping for the best for you. Whatever that might be. Whatever that if you want to stay with them and that's the best for you. Or if you need to get the fuck out. Either way, I'm here for you. I love you. And see you next episode. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I appreciate all of your love and support. If you really love today's episode, you should subscribe. 
And if you subscribe, then you get notifications of when my next episode launches. So another way to be super awesome would be to leave a rating and review or recommend it to your friends and family. If you're wicked awesome, you've already done all three. Another way to keep up with me and my crazy family is check out my website at chaoticcompass.com and I do blog and other stuff there. So I appreciate everything for you guys. I do this for you. So keep it up because the more you subscribe, the more I do. Mm -hmm.